guys, welcome back to the shop. Uh, today isn't going to be a regular build video. I've just been swamped with other stuff lately. Uh, you maybe noticed that last week I also didn't have a video. Uh, that was due to uh, a long in the books plan to take my family up to the mountains and go on a long camping trip with a bunch of friends of ours. Uh, we had a great time up there. We rode a lot of dirt bikes and four wheelers and did some hiking and it also marked the official start of my hunting season. Uh, as soon as hunting season comes around, all of my free time is spent in the mountains looking for game. Um, so I'm going to be a little bit busy for the next couple of months, so you'll have to bear with me on, on a little bit slower rollout of content than what, you've, what I've been doing lately. Um, but I figured I'd give you this update here, let you know what I've been up to, let you know what's still coming up. It's just going to be a little bit uh, fewer and far between for a little while until I start getting some stuff on the ground because hunting season is pretty important to me and my family because we tend to rely a lot on the stuff that we eat to feed us throughout the year. So the more I shoot, the more we eat. It's kind of an interesting cycle that way. Um, so anyway, getting ready for that camping trip last weekend, I just spent tons of time getting all my camping gear together and making sure I was packed and just didn't get a project uh, done in the official sense, but I got a lot of other stuff done. Uh, before going up there, I, I actually took and turned my first project on my little metal lathe that my dad gave me. Uh, this is an adapter that I can take my good camera, which I'm recording through right now, so I'm not going to be able to give you a full demonstration. But this adapter lets me take my good camera and put it on top of a spotting scope, and all of a sudden I have a ton more magnification and I can see and get pictures from pictures and video from a lot further distance away. Uh, as soon as I got this finished, I ran up there and started looking for elk. And in this footage right here, you can see a whole bunch of cows and some nice bulls and just some cool wildlife shots. But the interesting part about this is I was on a hillside about a mile from these elk and was able to get this up close and personal because I was able to mount my camera to this uh, spotting scope. Now this is a, actually a fast growing hobby called digiscoping and you can go and buy adapters for all sorts of different stuff. There's, there's tons of them just meant for cell phones. There's a bunch of them meant for cameras, specific models. Um, the problem with the ones for cameras is they're incredibly expensive. Uh, all the ones I was looking at were $200, $300 to do what I did and I wasn't about to spend that kind of money so I just got a piece of nylon threw it on the lathe and made it fit perfectly for, it took me maybe two hours to build. So I'm really happy with how that thing's working out so far. Hopefully I get a bunch more footage out of that too. Um, also getting ready for hunting season, I've been turning a bunch of elk calls on my little wood lathe. This has been a really fun project to do and I'm really excited to go and call at some of these elk and try to get them to come in close using something that I made myself. I haven't been planning on doing a video on how I've made these for two reasons. One, not everybody has a lathe, not everybody likes a lathe video, and two, even fewer people probably are interested in elk hunting. So I wasn't sure that anybody would even have interest in this. But if I'm wrong, please leave me a comment. If enough people think this would be interesting, then I would definitely go ahead and make a quick video on how I make these, because this is pretty simple once you find the kit, the hardware. You just have to turn a little barrel and you're good to go. I'm not the best caller, but I'm getting better. And this one sounds as good as anything I've ever seen sold in a store. So I'm pretty excited about that. Also, it's a whole lot cooler. This one's made out of some leftover pieces from an end grain cutting board. So it's got all sorts of crazy swirl and whatnot in it. Uh, I've gone through a couple of these. This is Spectra ply. It's just a color laminated plywood that I buy in some bricks. And uh, I got a couple of different colors that I picked out just because I wanted to see how they worked and how, how it looked. And been really happy with it so far. I've made at least a dozen of these and gave most of them away just to friends, to people in the industry that I know because I want to just get them out there and get opinions back from people so that I know if they sound good or not. You know, like I said, I'm not an expert caller, so hopefully I can get feedback from other people and kind of perfect what I've been trying to do here. 
Um, let's see, what else have I been working on? The other thing is, I've got a bunch of my skull plaques that people have wanted, so I've been working on those. Um, some of them are, you know, just the standard ones. This is a black walnut one, this is an ash one. Um, one interesting thing is somebody wanted their logo in this one, so I took it to a local CNC and had the logo uh, etched into it, or cut into it, uh, and then I spray painted it. Now I just need to sand it back off and put um, a final clear coat over the top. So once, once I sand the paint back off the face of this, the recess will still have the black in it and that's going to look really sharp. And the interesting thing about all these animals is that I use this peg as the way to hold the skull on the plaque. And this is uh, the brain stem hole in the back of the skull slides over this so you don't have to put any holes in the skull, you don't have to do any hardware to hold it in place. It just sits there and gravity holds it. The interesting thing about all these different species is even though the function is the same, that brain stem goes into that hole at different angles. Um, so I, every time I get a new species, I have to refigure out what angle does this post need to go in at. You can see that one's angled back a little bit. Deer are very easy, they actually are just 90 degrees. Elk are the same way, they're just 90 degrees, just bigger. Um, I found that most sheep are a 15 degree angle, either positive or negative, from that 90. So in order to figure all of that out, I kind of made this little cheat board. So I can mount this on the wall the way I would, and I have everything from uh, the straight 90 to plus five degrees at a time or minus five degrees at a time and tip it back and forth. And then I can hang that skull on here until the teeth just touch down on the board. That way I know that it's making contact at one, two, three places. And that's when they're the most solid and can hang on the wall without worrying about them falling off. So because of this board, it makes it a lot easier once I have the skull in hand to figure out what angle that needs to be. So like I said, last weekend was the official start to my hunting season and because of that I'm going to be out of the shop for most of September and a lot of October. Um, but because last weekend was the start, I was already up there and I've got in on a whole lot of cool stuff. Now I'm not going to pretend that everybody is interested in hunting and I'm going to spare you most of what's not interesting to most people. but. I've already been up there and got a lot of really cool footage of some wildlife, of some scenery, and of some different cool things that are going on. Uh, so I figured I'd share a little bit of that with you. One of my main reasons for going hunting is to spend time with a bunch of my friends. We usually go up together, have a big camp set up, have a lot of fun, and see if we can go find some animals to chase around. Um, most of the time it's just us having a good time and occasionally we find some critters. Um, we see some incredible scenery while we're up there. We get some incredible sunsets. We get to see lots of wildlife that you never get to see by just driving through the mountains or camping or whatever. You, you go and you look for these things and it's amazing what you can run into. So like I said, I'm not going to try to force a hunting video on this channel. I just kind of wanted to share some of the cooler parts of what I have been doing lately and what I'm going to be doing for the rest of the month at least. So that's really about all I've got to say for this week. Uh, I'm hoping that you'll bear with me during this sort of hiatus from my channel. I'm still planning on getting projects done. I'm just not sure if I'm going to meet that every week deadline that I've set for myself. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has noticed this, but other than last week and the 4th of July, those are the only two weeks I've missed a video uh, in 2017. So anyway, uh, thanks for checking this out. Thanks for stopping by and thanks for being patient with me. Uh, I will definitely have more content coming up. It just might be a little bit before I get back into the shop and start making more sawdust. So thanks guys. We'll uh, see you next time.